everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula with Scott Ramph and Noel McFoy. That was Asaph Adonai on piano playing, I know, one of his favorites. Yeah, my big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> yep, it's a good one. It's a very good, it's a nice melody. It's Monday, yeah. yeah. So we have a lot to talk about today. There's a lot going on, and uh, the weather is not looking any uh, better for the <laughs> for your week. But of course, uh, if you want to find out more information, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. We post all our shows and more on our website. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Um, Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can check us out at MCAT TV Missoula. You can also like us on Facebook and to find out more information, go to MCAT.org. Yep, so I just want to get through that real quickly because I just, uh, there's a lot. Uh, I have some city government stuff I, I want to talk about where you guys can expect tonight and of course we brought back the uh, Rose report because there's some road construction just behind us up on um, Spruce Street just off of Higgins and um, yeah there's uh, I'm gonna tell you uh, some road reports but first let's let's dive into weather so it is currently 44 degrees outside um, there is a, uh, a high of 49 today of course, Tuesday's going to be a high of 59. Of course, things will start warming up maybe in the low 60s, low to mid 60s for the rest of your week. Uh, but of course, you can expect chances of rain to constantly be going. And of course, um, this morning it didn't rain, but of course, as soon as I looked outside, just before I walked in to the morning show, it uh, started raining. So yes. it is definitely raining outside. It's, it's dark and gray. But it is still spring, and so all this moisture we need it. So to suppress our fires, that that sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, like it rains for maybe a, like one day, and then a, one dry day, and then boom, fire season starts. Yep. That's usually what all it takes, and it's it's definitely that's usually how it happens. But of course, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, some the roads report. So. Are you guys ready for some roads report? Okay, so this is what you guys can expect for street closures for your roads report for the week of May 22nd. That was yesterday, and today is May 23rd. <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, he'll be away uh -oh. from today until, wait, well, actually, he'll be away um, 23rd Street to 39th Street. Construction will start today, uh, started Monday, May 16th, and it will continue until November. So this is gonna be a long process. And of course, this is the big, huge, um, um, remember that uh, that you had the SID, the Special yeah. uh, Improvement District. We talked oh, about so this. Oh, so they're finally so they're doing starting it. to fix the road. And oh, this wow, is okay. one of the more expensive ones because it's not just a road; it's a curvy road. Yeah. And they're trying to improve the and road. And uphill too. Yeah. So they're trying to curve the road and mm -hmm. um, try to prevent any kind of like ice. You know, like, like it, they're trying to adjust for ice because and it, it, when there's ice, because mm -hmm. when there's ice in the on that road people always slip and of there's a light there's a light right down the street it's like russell turns into hill view mm -hmm. it's southwest higgins you go up there and then you stop as you're going down and you're just like oh i can't stop and there's yeah. no way oh that's so scary. so some people I'm... like fall into the dish okay so yeah so the next uh there's old highway 93 and if you guys haven't um been up that way it's the road that go goes off of reserve so you're going on reserve and you're saying oh, i want to take a shortcut and you know rather than going all the way to brooks you always take that r the first right off of uh, old highway 93 they have some road construction and it goes um it's all the way to mcdonald street and of course construction will continue south reserve street pedestrian crossing bridge this street will be closed to westbound traffic both west and east of reserve and the next one uh, there's more uh, it's brooks to post side uh, side and road this construction is continuing on the portion of the lolo to missoula trail so there's a lot of stuff happening they're closing down old highway 93 specifically to widen it for um bikers and bike trails it's the tiger grant that happened in lolo they're increasing it moving forward with this um, there's the Burlington and side street between Stevens and Brooks so installation of new sidewalks and curbing will continue this week and continue for six to eight weeks Wow so expect that to happen um, and of course since it's raining construction will probably be even slower so uh, and then the next one is Guardsman Lane at Fort Missoula will be closed and detours will be placed from May 9th through September 2016 so of course it already started and it's gonna go until September and um, yeah, access to the Fort Missoula Museum Agency of Business will be via 36th Street and um, Green um, Gildan Avenue. So basically, if you're going up there, go down South Street and then take your left up that one pathway to get to the, the museum. It's probably the best way to get there. Um, there's Broadway, Woody to Orange. Um, work is continuing on construction and stock Stockman's Bank. So on that block, the um, the sidewalk has been closed. So if you ha haven't had to like walk from downtown, you know, to other side, other part of town, because that's basically how I, you know I go from downtown a lot of times. So 
uh, I always have to defer my walking process as well. And of course, here's some um, parks and trail closures. Um, da -da, there's uh, Fort Missoula Regional Park uh, frontage on South Avenue. Construction on the, for the Kim Williams um, Canyon River trails are from April 11th through the June. And then of course, the last but not least, Riverfront Trail and Madison Street Pedestrian Underbridge. The Montana Department of Transportation will begin making repairs to the Madison and Higgins Street bridges. And of course, cyclists and pedestrians should uh, figure out new detours. So basically, if you've been used to like going underneath the bridge to go to the university, um, that is no longer the case. Yeah, you'll have to go elsewhere. Yeah. Nice. Thanks, Scott, for the Rose Report. It's and always good to keep up on it. And where, so where can people find out more information about it? They just go to the City of Missoula's website, uh, ci.missoula.mt.us, or you can just type in um, City of Missoula, and it brings you to this nice little page, and you can find out all sorts of great stuff about your government and so on and so forth. Uh, but there is one thing I want to talk about. Um, government, there's a government meeting tonight. Okay. It starts at 7 p.m. They have uh, a bunch of stuff going on, and most of it's all about rail construction. But there's one thing that really caught my eye, and here is a little bit of background. In 2000, and uh, I'll go back to oh, me. Yeah, hey, guys. Sure. So um, in 2012, the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act was passed, containing with it Title VI, also known as the Public Safety and Spectrum Act. So this was uh, back in 2012. They call this the Spectrum Act, which is supposed to um, have city government to improve their um, Wi-Fi or internet infrastructures to increase speed and internet and all that stuff. So that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to do wireless connections and specifically mandate state or local government to approve of minor modifications to existing communication facilities. And of course that means specific criteria with emphasis on um, co-location. Co in response to the adoption of the Spectrum Act. So, of course, um, it was passed in 2012, so all I can got to say is it's about time. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Sounds well, good. That's definitely one thing Missoula's uh, definitely slow on is any kind of improvement with the uh, technology infrastructure. I agree. Are we even, we're 4G now, right? Uh, no. No? We're, we're totally 3G. 3G? We, oh we're God. LTE. Okay. So a lot of times, like, uh, you I know, know you get cellular service, means. LTE is like something that if you don't have Wi-Fi, you have LTE. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. below that is 3G. So LTE is mostly like kind of like in between 3G and 4G, technically. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we at least we're in between. We're almost there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So that about does it for uh, my segment. Of course, we do have a whole bunch of new programs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just talk uh, real briefly about each one. There's the Montana Supreme Court. We had, you know, where we had the open statements about our water condemnation yeah. trial, and um, we have a little a taste of what you guys can expect from that tonight. Um, there is um, there's a faculties um, kind of concert recital from mm -hmm. the University of Montana. So this is like a musical recital, and we did show you this cl same exact clip from last week, but this is kind of we didn't actually have the clip from Rhonda. He just kind of recycled a clip for us. And he's like, <laughs> Ron, we've already showed this clip, but this is just kind of like a, just kind of show you what you guys can see tonight. Mm -hmm. But of course, then tomorrow night is the beginning of a, the very first uh, episode of a, a very ongoing series of the Southwest Asia Conference 2016. And this is part one. It's the very first premiere. And then of course, the continuation of the President Lecture Series and Global Public Health, where they take, talk about the spread of AIDS in Africa. So I give you a brave description, but when we come back, we'll have all these wonderful events that um, Noah, Noah has prepared for you. We represent Mountain Water today. William Mercer of Holland and Hart is here representing Carlisle Infrastructure Partners. And Gary Zadick of Ugrin, Alexander Zadick and Higgins is representing the employee interveners. We plan to you, we, I will be doing the argument on behalf of the defendants. Mr. Zadek, on behalf of the employee interveners. backs are up against the wall, and it is no longer enough to invoke the great values of secularism. Concrete efforts must be made to fight against the segregation of territories and entire segments of the French population, while at the same time standing firm in opposition to all forms of radicalism. 
we must endeavor to arrive at a national narrative that relinquishes the claim to the univocal, that does not adopt a warlike posture, and that seeks to better understand the situation. Only then will we be able to follow the natural course of history, a common and shared history. Many thought colonial history would just go away if it was left alone, rendered invisible. 5-4 you know, um, campaign finance, 5-4 on affirmative action, 5-4 on some of the abortion rights cases, 5-4 on some of the employment discrimination cases. You really are talking, if, if this were to occur, that you have either Mary Garland or someone else, maybe even further uh, more progressive than Mary Garland, occupy that fifth seat you can fundamentally rethink how you operate with the U.S. Army. There was a low level of HIV infection already in most of Africa, most of sub-Saharan Africa, before we even recognized it in the U.S. Um, and then it just advanced in a frightening fashion. By 1987, you can see there's 10 or 15 countries that have an infection rate of over two. Hey guys, we're back. And so if you guys remember on Friday, uh, we were talking about the uh, Missoula Brewing Company and how it used to be in, you know, it was in Missoula and they made the Highlander beer and that was way back in the day and Scott thought it was on Brook Street and I thought that it was at the base of Waterworks and remember when Scott was like, I'm pretty sure that I'm still right. Well everyone, he wasn't. He was wrong. I was right. We looked it up and so I just want to, Scott was wrong. That doesn't happen often, so when it does, I really have to <laughs> take a minute to applaud myself because Scott thinks he's always right. I do. But he's not always right. I guess I'm not. <laughs> la la la, da 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 da. <laughs> ch, ch, hoo, hoo. Pew pew. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears over to events after my mini celebration. Okay, hello everyone. So, this is what's going on in your community today. Uh, we're starting at 11 a.m. over at the Mozilla Public Library for their open hours in the makerspace. This is where you can learn how to use the equipment or work on a project of your choice. At noon, over at Montgomery Distillery is their Moscow Monday. This is where they redistribute the wealth. A dollar from each cocktail sold goes to a different nonprofit in the Missoula, Montana area. Uh, we've got a couple of bridge groups going on today. At 1 p.m. over at the Senior Center is the Beginners Bridge Group. $1.25 is charged to cover expenses. Expenses, And then we have Duplicate Bridge. That's at Garden City Duplicate Bridge Club, 2825 Stockyard Road, Building I-3. Um, and that's at 1 o'clock, too. At 4 o'clock, over at the base of the Warehouse Mall is Wordplay. It's a word games, poetic expansion, and free writing. Over the Top Hat Lounge, they've got their live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So it's like happy hour, it's trivia, it's audio and video, and uh, all your Grateful Dead fix. Yeah. Over in the Highlander Tap Room, what I was just talking about, uh, they've got Giving Bach Night. So you can uh, drink some beer and raise money for Relay for Life, starting at 5. And then uh, over at the Missoula Public Library at 6 p.m. is a QPR Gatekeeper Suicide Prevention Training, um, which this week is, a, not this week, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, Montana is actually the number one state per capita that has suicides per capita, number one. And so, you know, it all starts with like mental health. So mental health is very, very important. And so this is going to be talking about uh, recognizing the signs of suicide and how to get a person at risk risk uh, the help that they need. So that's going to be in large meeting rooms from 6 to 8 tonight at the Missoula Public Library. Over at Plonk is service industry night starting at 6. If you work in the service industry, uh, they'll give you a special menu for exclusive deals on appetizers and drinks. And then over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got an open mic night at 6. And then down at Taste Pud's Kitchen at 6.30 is a Knife Skills Adult Cooking Workshop. Uh, it's $40, so you can go in there and sharpen your knives and learn how to brush up on your skills and then probably eat some food. And then we have a couple, some, some music tonight. It's a couple musics. Over at Red Bird Wine Bar is a John Floridas Trio at 7 p.m. And then over at the Roxy Theater at 7.30 is uh, the first Folio Montana, Much Ado About Nothing. So you guys know that Shakespeare's, uh, one of his, his 
one of several books or it's one copy one book that was made into only like a couple copies scott how many copies was it 79 uh of the first folio yeah. of shakespeare's complete works yeah and yeah it's on display at the uh, montana museum of art and culture which is in the par tv building just outside of just across from the Adams Center. Mm-hmm. And so that's in display until the 31st. Yeah. And so the Roxy Theater is doing movies in honor of Shakespeare. So the movie is Much Ado About Nothing. That'll be at the Roxy Theater at 7.30. Mm-hmm. And then my last event for Monday is Blues Monday. That's at the Badlander at 9 o'clock. Um, and now we are switching gears and we're going over to Musical Notes with Asaph Adonai. A stewardess on a flight notices two African-American passengers One of the passengers is in pain. The stewardess says, can I get you something? The passenger says, small butter laying me to the bone, jacking me up, tight me. The stewardess says, sorry, I don't understand. And the other passenger says, cutty can't hang. Our guest on this segment today said, oh, stewardess, I speak jive. And the stewardess says, oh, that's, thank goodness for that. So our guest tells the stewardess that the passenger is in great pain and can the stewardess help him? And the, stu- the stewardess tells our guest, have him relax. I'll be back as soon as I get some medicine. And our guest tells the passenger, just hang loose, blood. She's going to get you up on the rebound on the med side. <laughs> And the passenger says, what it is, big mama? My mama no raise no dummies. I dug her rap. <laughs> I just love that line. And finally, our guest says, cut me some slack, Jack. Chump don't want help. Chump don't get help. Dude don't got no brains anyway. <laughs> Can you believe this lovely woman was speaking jive? And of course, our guest is Barbara Lillian Combs, known to the world as Barbara Billingsley. There she is. Barbara Billingsley, she was an American film, television actress, and a voice actress and stage actress. She got her start in 1950 in a movie called Careless Years, and then that took her to her most iconic role as June Cleaver on Leave it to Beaver. For those who are watching that might recognize and don't remember. And there she is with Hugh Beaumont, the actor that played her husband on the series. Now this show, um, she hit her stride with that iconic role from 1957 to 1963 and of course on the far right Jerry Mathers is the Beave or the Beaver (laughs) and they called him the Beaver because he couldn't pronounce Theodore and then Tony Dow on the left who played Wally, the older brother. So anyway, this show, as I stated, was from 1957 to 1963 and then they had a sequel in 1983 to 1989. So that's kind of a stretch there. Barbara attended Los Angeles Junior College and she got her, she she, um, traveled to Broadway. She was in a play called Straw Hat at the very beginning, which only lasted five days. So she winds up taking a job for $60 a week as a fashion model in New York. And after she married Glenn Billingsley, that's when she got the MGM contract to do Leave It to Beaver and of course the rest is history and there she is and the two characters in their later years when they had the second series and um, when she uh, appeared in Airplane that resurrected her career because she got typecast for years playing this perfect mom there she is and uh, this made her famous for the second time just like when she was on Leave It to Beaver And because of this role, this little, what you call, momentary role, she wound up on Mork and Mindy with Robin Williams. And she did some other television shows. Now, Leave it to Beaver was seen in 100 countries around the world. Isn't that incredible for that time? And that's why this show is probably considered the best family show in history. And, of course, she's considered the best family mom in television history. And my final words... um, She also was in a movie called Muppet Babies from 1984 Hmm. to 1991, playing the voice of the nanny and the little train. She had a dual role in there. Nice. And she got the Emmy Award nomination for Best Performer in a Children's Series in 1989 and 1990. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Her final role was playing 
Aunt Martha. Do you remember they had a, the invisible Aunt Martha and Leave mm-hmm. It to Beaver? Nobody ever knew who this auntie was. Well, she plays the auntie in the 1997 film version of Leave It to Beaver, and her final oh. appearance was in 2003 in a movie called Secret Santa. So <laughs> I remember the uh, 1997 mm-hmm. Dis- Disney Channel um, yeah. Leave It to Beaver. Um, you, you remember Eric Von Detten? Yeah. Oh he, yeah. He was the he was Wally. He was the uh-huh. yeah. Dummy. The new, he was yeah. A, like <laughs> Eric Von I, I don't want to say the that. 90s babe. Yeah, early two uh-huh. thousands Disney babe Eric yeah. Bennett for sure. Like honestly, I, my favorite movie of his was Brink. Brink, oh, it's the best. Let's go Blade, bro. <laughs> Blade is love. Yeah, Leave It to Beaver, definitely. Um, uh-huh. that, the nineties, the, the, the ninety seven movie was pretty good. Yeah, for it all was. things considered. But you know, it would be impossible, like I usually say with some of these guests, depending on who they are, because her resume is like outrageous. But I just had to just condense it down. But she did leave the world not only speaking jive, which Mm -hmm. people talked about that years later in her career, including Jerry Mathers, they say, hey, this lady's a comedian, she can speak jive, and people were trying to speak jive when that first came out, so. That's funny. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, of course, her greatest role, she'll always be remembered as the best mom in television history is June Cleaver. Nice. I'll stop right there on that note. Thank you very much, Asa. Sure. That was Musical Notes with Asa Fadonai. So what do you think about remakes, Noelle? Do you, do you like remakes in general? Because you know, remakes, uh, remakes, remakes. Like you know, you have yeah. old shows, and then you have like uh, you know Will Ferrell's Bewitched, which yeah. was like. Uh. I don't. I don't really know how I feel about remakes. I think that if they're done, I don't really know. It's the way they approach it because twenty one because twenty one Jump Street took a completely different approach yeah. from the actual series with Johnny yeah. Depp. Even though Johnny Depp was in twenty one Jump Street, spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was. Yeah, he was. It, it was. Like, I used to watch the show when I was in high school. I come home and or like mm-hmm. skip school and just watch it as well as uh did you guys ever see renegade i remember that barely. oh renegade there was, I, Vincent black i remember uh, uh land of the lost land not of the Robert. old school one but there was a 90s nickelodeon mm-hmm. version of it oh yeah and the song was land of the lost land of the lost it just depends and then it says welcome to the land of the lost i think land of the lost i think it depends too like yeah i don't really I don't. I don't know. I think it also depends honestly, on how they Because honestly, if they were, if they, if they, yeah. if they made Leave It to Beaver like right now, it, I can totally see it like uh, being handled by like Seth Rogen and those guys. I've, like yeah. Jonah Hill is like a grown up Beaver, and then yeah. uh, uh, Seth Rogen would be Wally. Yeah. And then be like. Hur, hur, hur. Yeah, it would be it, silly. It'd be completely like off the rails. It really would. Yeah. I can, that's yeah. the only way it could be. Like a lot of times, it's like. Like, remakes of movies are just basically parodies of the original, and it would be just like, okay, we're just gonna go, like, yeah. a hard R with this. Yeah, Which is true. completely opposite of Beaver would be. Huh. Yeah, so anyways, uh, that was my little, That's um, a good question, little, little it's note. It's like, me think, What if like, you were to remake Leave it to Beaver? Would it be, a, would it be uh, appropriate <laughs> for today's youth? Would probably, the youth be like, no. Probably, I think it no. would be outdated and irrelevant, because, you know, that, perf- that family was so perfect. Yeah. I mean, you need a show like Law and Order these days. They're perfect. Yeah. They were perfect. <laughs> I mean, shows that have just like no like controversy, no like no drama. It's yeah. like people don't are not engaged with that kind of people. A lot of people don't like that. Like everything's great, everything's happy. Because yeah. I watched a show where just like everything was great, everything was happy, everything doesn't get go from good to better. Mm-hmm. Everything just got better and better in the show, and then every, and like people just stopped watching it because it's like eh, you know I don't really um, yeah connect with these characters. Yeah, it yeah. does not compute Will Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's People true. need to relate. Yeah. Um, but of course, we still have a bunch of uh, Tuesday events for yes, you guys. We do. Yeah. But uh, here is an art clip uh, featuring uh, some of the uh, Hellgate artists from Hellgate High School, and this will end by the end of this week.
Hello, we are back. This is what's going on in your community tomorrow on Tuesday. Okay, so over at the Lifelong Learning Center starting at 9 a.m., they've got a social media marketing class. Um, so they're going to learn internet searches for information and how to get your content in front of potential customers, uh, how to write content and get photos for blogs and social media networks, how to create an effective search engine optimization campaign, and they're going to take a look at marketing tools. Mm, you had me at optimization. Right, I had myself at marketing tools. Yeah. Uh, over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they've got elephant toothpaste at 11. So it just looks like huge toothpaste squeezed out of a tube, but it's not. It's elephant toothpaste. Maybe. We'll see. A lot of toothpaste. You'll just have to go and find out. But don't stay, because so, you might have to clean up. <laughs> over in the Alps boardroom in the Florence building, they've got Shooting the Bull Toastmasters at noon. Uh, this is a lively club where you can improve your public speaking and grow your vocabulary. Increase your confidence as well. Yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center at Red Willow at 4. Um, this is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers to help with PTSD, anxiety, and sleeping problems. Uh, over in Lolo, uh, they've, at the Lolo Elementary School, I would think so, they've got their Lolo Branch reading activity. It starts at 4. It's for ages uh, 3 to 6, and children must be accompanied by a parent. And then in Frenchtown High School, they've got their Frenchtown Branch Lego Club that starts also at 4. Target Range School has got an outdoor road biking class. It starts at 5.30. Um, this class is designed for bike riders with an intermediate fitness level that will support a ride of 15 miles an hour for one in one and a half hours. Um, and so they're going to focus on group riding skills and pace lines with safety and improved personal efficiency. Yeah, it also talks about appropriate clothing, equipment options, bike, na bike maintenance, roadside repair, and more. Over the Top Hat Lounge is a picking circle. It starts at 6. This is for uh, bluegrass-oriented musicians to come and jam out. And then over at Burn Street Bistro tomorrow night at 6 is the Northside Westside Leadership Team Meeting. Um, so it's agenda item, public comment, anything you want to harp about on the north side or west side, you can go there and tell your feelings. Great. At the Public Library, they've got a community creative writing workshop at 6 p.m. This is a drop-in environment focusing on creative writing workshop process. Uh, at Inner Workings Resource, located at 210 North Higgins, Suite 207, uh, there is a compassionate communication class, and uh, that starts at 6 o'clock. Over at the Good Food Store, they've got a, a Flavors of the World, Alaska's Wild Kanai, and it starts at 6.30, and so they're going to be cooking lots of dishes that involve fish. Uh, it costs is $35. Over at the Public Library is System Check. This is the official gamers club for ages 19 and under. That starts at 6.30. Uh, and then over at the Missoula Children's Theater is the Crown Traverse presentation. And I thought it said Clown Traverse presentation. So when I first read it, I was like, oh my god, is this some like weird clown thing? But no, it's about uh, the crown of the continent. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a multimedia presentation given by three guys um, who did a 600 mile high mountain tra traverse last fall from Missoula to Banff. They crossed the area known as the Crown of the Continent. So the presentation will start with a short film of the adventure followed by pictures and stories. Yep, and Banff is where my family comes from. In Banff? Yes, Banff. There was a misspelling in Ellis Islands, and you know the B looked like an, an R, and then they dropped the last F. That's why we got the last name Ramp. <laughs> nice Scott. Yes. Banff. <laughs> I should well, just move there and just be like, yo, man, Ramp from Banff. Ramp from Banff. Ramp from Banff. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I'm just gonna start calling you that. I'm gonna tell everyone you're from Banff. From yeah, Banff. it's Ramp from Banff. Oh no, I am. I am. Uh, I'm stern. Um, born and raised in Missoula, Montana. Mm -hmm. Not many people can actually say that. Yeah. Because most people leave me. Missoula, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Why? Why would they do that? <laughs> people just do well, jobs. I mean, oh. it, it's clear. It's like people, jobs, and the market here, rent. Economy. It's, it's expensive. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Over at the Barn Movement Studio at 7 is Ula. And then over at the Missoula Senior Center, also 7 is African Dance Class. Uh, it's $10 per class for that one and $35 for four classes. 
Uh, we've got a couple of adult trampoline and tumbling nights. So that's tomorrow at 7.30 at Mismo Gymnastics, ages, um, I think anyone 12 and up. Uh, and it's only $10 drop in if you're a member, $15 drop in if you're not a member. And then over at Roots Acro Sports Center, you can be 16 and up. Um, and that starts at 7.30. And that only costs $8 to drop in. Hmm. Yeah. We've got some music tomorrow night. There's Missoula Music Showcase at the Badlander at 9. And then over at Stage 112 is uh, La Luz, Six Sad World at Ancient Forest. Uh, that's only $5 in advance and $7 day of show. Uh, and then over at the Real Lounge, they've got Scatter Gather and Bla the Blaine Jones. Uh, it's only three dollars to get in, and that starts at ten o'clock. Nice. So that's what's going on in your community. Check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, uh, the Independent, or the Missoulian for more events going on. I usually get all of my information from the uh, MissoulaEvents.net, so just check that out. And you can find out more information about Wake Up Missoula by logging on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com/slash Wake Up Missoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. You can follow Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook, and to find out more information, just go to MCAT.org. Yep. And of course, uh, I I like I like Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always so many stuff, so much stuff going on on Tuesday night. It's funny sure. because during on Mondays there's like not really very much happening. Like no. everything I read to you is like everything that was on the Missoula events page, and then Tuesdays is, and then to starting Tuesdays and the rest of the week is just like gets bigger, and bigger, and bigger. Um, and so I. And then after Memorial around. Day, after Memorial Day is always like everything is happening. The camps. It's all about summer. All camps. about summer camps. Mm -hmm. All about out to lunch. Uh, um, downtown tonight in the park. Yep. So so yeah. all that stuff will be starting after, and probably like first week in June. Yeah. Almost maybe even like the week of Memorial Day, mm -hmm. week, day or something like that. Yep. But of course, uh, yeah, it's a lot of great interesting things. Of course, last Saturday was the big our last uh, stop animation it drop in, was. and what we did that day was we had a party and we invited all the parents and all the kids who were in our camps even once or twice mm -hmm. throughout the year and um, you know we just sat and watched the movie um, we ate some food and um, yeah it was really fun yeah it was great and, it was and funny. they walked away with a DVD of all their yeah. all their stuff it was funny because the parents were just like trying to pay us so we're like no it's a celebration and they even just dropped their kids off oh a lot of them dropped their like, kids okay. off they're just like I don't <laughs> yeah. want to watch my kids they're, like, they're gonna get a DVD and they I can watch us anytime yeah it's true I was like okay Fine. But of course, I do have a um, a movie from uh, from last um, Saturday drop in. Yes. As well. So this movie, uh, I filmed this movie with these kids, and so I edited it together. But it was lost in tra it was just lost in translation. We were deleting a bunch of stuff and just just got deleted. But Scott ended up finding the footage on something else, and so he edited it together as he thought that it made sense because yeah, he wasn't I've, even a part of it whatsoever. I just made it in order of clips most. Yeah. So without further ado, here's the premiere of, I, I called the movie Hotel 666, and uh, she called it, uh, they, the kids called it The Dulling. Which is silly, but yeah. Yeah. So without further ado, here is the um, the first, I think it's the first television premiere of uh, this nice scary horror, the last horror movie they ever did. <laughs> I wonder why nobody's here. It's the busiest night of the year. Yeah, so do I. Well, is there a specific reason or something? No idea. <sighs> okay. Uh, What's your name? Uh, food. your name, right? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm Jake. Sally. Names? Any room available.
this job is hipster. <laughs> oh, that was kids. wonderful. That's crazy, kids. Scott, you did a really good job. I think you actually did better than I did on my own edits. <laughs> I want that in. Uh, I'm going to get this in the recording. I'm just going to have it looped over and over again. I'm going to be like dazed and confused as the camera spins as I'm laying down. You're uh, much better job. Much better job. Whatever. You are a better editor than I am. But I've only been doing this because forever. he has more experience. Yeah. I've been doing this forever. You have more there's sometimes when do. kids make movies and it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. There, there, there's only I mean, like uh, this year. I mean, like especially, um, it's so it's so difficult. A lot of times, some of the times I don't I don't really know what the kids really want yeah. with their videos. So mm -hmm. um, I try to like say, okay, guys, you need to have a clear plot, yeah. a clear idea. Plan, idea but yeah. what I usually see is them running around and pretending to fight and punch <laughs> each other. And then, I mean, maybe say sarcastic things about each other. Yeah, and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like, so you basically want me to edit a video about you technically bullying other kids? Yeah, right. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So there's some videos I just did not do because some of them were just like, this is really mean. Yeah. Uh, they. Yeah, they pretty much just want to run around and film each other and not do any stories. Yeah. They want us to film them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I I think I'm gonna definitely take a, a different approach with. Uh, I mean, there's some schools are really good. Some kids mm -hmm. got the idea and they know what to expect. They know what they're gonna do. But a lot of times you're gonna have to nail this in. It's like, listen, you guys can't film until you guys get this yeah. through. A lot of times. So I'm gonna have to hold that over their head. It's like, listen, we need to go through the process. And if you don't go through the process, your movies won't be edited. So there it's you true. go. It's and snap. And snap. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Well, I mean. Well, I'm at the tail end of the year. I'm like, all the kids, all the stuff is already done, and so it's like all this work, and it's like, oh, it's all over, and then summer camp starts. We've got a so month. So right now I'm we very like pessimistic. Yeah, we I'm always like optimistic when month. it's happening, but I'm always pessimistic when it's over. I'm just yeah. like, oh, these kids, oh, get out of here. Yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. But our show went long today. It did. And I mean, that's all I have for you. We have a lot of guests happening on Wednesday. Yes, we, we have a uh, guest from the Missoula Agent Services. It's um, Elder Ab uh, it's elder Abuse Awareness Month coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, uh, I believe we have Nikki Robb coming on, but I'm not entirely sure. And of course, um, we have a guest. Um, her name is Nikki as well. Uh, and she, no, her name is Kim. She's gonna be talking about human trafficking here. Great, so awesome, yeah. We full look, show on I look Wednesday forward to that, you and uh, mm -hmm. I also give you some information about what happened at the city council. But most, more likely than not, there really wasn't much. There isn't gonna be too much to talk about. It's all about road construction, people. Because this is the time of the year where they're talking nothing about a road construction and approving things to say, hey, you want to repair the road? Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, so, taxpayers. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks for joining me. Um, thanks, ASAP, for a uh, little um, history about Leave It to Beaver. Yeah, and practicing that jive. I had to really practice that yeah. and prepare for it. Yeah, yes. we really appreciate it. Yeah, that was great. So, for um, Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McVoy. And I'm Scott Ram. Here's ASAP Fatter Night. We'll see you guys Wednesday.